All right, greetings in the name of the Lord and welcome to the worship service here at St. Paul Union Church. It's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful day to be together. We're thankful. You can notice sometimes at a church, it'll have a sign outside and it'll say worship service and it tells you what time in a sense that it starts. Well, this is a worship service. Amen. Amen. And we're going to start and we're going to worship. Isn't that right? All right. Let's do this. I I like to say things like do the scripture. I would, I'm going to say Psalms 107.2, which says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are they supposed to say? Psalms 107.1, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Let's do that, okay? I'm going to say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Let's thank God in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that your mercy does endure forever. We thank you that we are here today. You have worked mightily in our hearts and in our lives, and you have brought us forth for such a time as this. We thank you that we can love you and worship you and know you today, glorify your name, give you praise and thanksgiving, be exalted, be lifted up on high as we worship thee and praise thee in the mighty name of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're ready to worship, would you stand up? And if you're not ready, you can stand up also. I was thinking today, and the Lord impressed on my heart, that so many of these songs today, so many of these worship songs are geared toward God providing for us, about there being a battle, but God is stronger than that, that weapons are formed against us, but they won't prevail. And I think, honestly, that this is a timely Uh, set of songs for what many of us listening right now experiencing this or watching it recorded are or will be going through bless you and there are battles going on all around us but we're victorious saints you know that we're victorious because of the victor Jesus that's right all right let's make these declarations let your heart and spirit be lifted I'm holding on to your promise. 
is always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side i know who goes before me i know who stands behind the god of angel armies is always always by my side the god of angel armies is always by my side Hallelujah. <laughs> amen god we thank you for being with us thank you for calling us thank you for assuring us that you would be with us when we're with you so we want to do that god we want to walk with you. We want to walk in step with your spirit. A thousand times I've failed, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all things. I want to sing that part again. A thousand times I've failed, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all things. In my heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside. Justice and praise become my embrace to love me from the inside out. Your will above all else, my purpose remains. The art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all things. My heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise.
soul I give you control Consume me from the inside out, Lord Let justice and praise Become my embrace To love you from the inside out Let's sing that again in my heart and my soul My heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Everlasting.
There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. Oh, I'm not backing down from any giant. Cause I know how this story ends. Cause I know how this story ends. the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good sing that again you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it turn it for good and you turn it for good I'm gonna see I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good if you believe it declare it you take what the enemy for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it for good you take you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good and you turn it I'm going to see a victory I'm going to see a victory I'm going to see a victory for the battle I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. One more time. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Our God. 
My steps have been ordered, you go before me, God I'm depending on you, the hope of my future found in you only. God, I'm depending on you. Let's sing it out, power. Power belongs to the one who was and is to come. Power belongs to our God. Hallelujah. God is good. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It's hard to switch to announcements after that. Oh, that was so wonderful. And um, thank you, Janita, for singing. That was, I was hearing you sing too. How many believe the Lord's coming? Hallelujah. Scripture says, come Lord Jesus. I'm going to start, stop meddling. I'm going to have to do these announcements, but I'm kind of, um, have to come out of something here. Whew. No matter what the situation is, no matter what has happened, no matter what goes forth, hallelujah, he is our Lord and our God. He takes care of us. He watches over us. He goes before us. He provides for us. He even lifts up our head. Hallelujah. From shame. He is the good and the faithful God. 
Hallelujah. He has come and redeemed us. He watches over us intimately and personally. He's there always. Hallelujah. The Lord wants you to know he's always there. Hallelujah. Has he not said it? Did he not declare it? Will he not fulfill all of his promises? All of his word? Hallelujah. His word cannot be broken. His word cannot fail. He is our God. And he is good forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for SPUC. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for last week, even the communion service last week was so awesome. I'm so thankful there's a church here that we can come to and be a part of. This has been such an oasis. I didn't know that people used that word, but it's an oasis to me. To come here and not know anybody and to come into a place that the grace of God is here and there's gifts here and people are leading in worship and teaching. Hallelujah. I just was in communication with my home church and things there didn't go so well. They're having to start almost all over again and rebuilding so many people. And it's a great church and a large church. Can we thank God that he has watched over us here? Can we thank God that we have a good financial report here? Amen. Amen. That God, I just think sometimes of all the people that have gone before us and all the people that have prayed, think of this place and all the people that have prayed and God answering those prayers for all of those years of what, how God has brought this ministry into being and how this ministry is standing strong today. We can say perfect, nobody's perfect but we're standing together today. I wanted to thank you again. I have to leave for a few weeks. I'm so thankful that the church understands that and being an associate member to where that we have other obligations and other ministries and things that we have to go sometimes. And you have to have a vacation sometimes and go and do that, but remain faithful to the house with your prayers and your love and your giving in that. Being from a pastoral background, I would say those things. But... Um, Aren't you thankful that God has moved in SPUC? I've heard so many testimonies from so many people. I've met some of the best people I've ever met in my life here. I've been in some of the best prayer meetings I've ever been in in my life. Right here. And then God orders our steps. Some are coming, some are going. But God knows what he's doing. And we have to trust God and go with that. Amen? Well, I didn't mean to get too carried away there, but... Ah, hallelujah. We had a good church picnic. We really did. Um, I got a, I, well, we need to thank Rosemary and uh, Pam for going early and protecting those tables so we could have our, everybody trying to get those good tables that we had. And uh, I found out a few things there. I got a free English lesson from um, Rosemary. That's good. People like me need that. <laughs> but I also learned how to, um, admire the sandwich that um, Janita was eating, and then know to go get one from Jason here. Thanks for the sandwich. <laughs> but it was a good turnout. And now that we can get out some more, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more things that are going to come out right there on that. Amen? All right. The announcements, I'm trying. The announcements, you know, the first rule of announcements is what? Read the announcements. Not me, but you, you know. Uh, you know that Wednesday night online, we do have the Bible study. It's fantastic. You know, Zoom, we have prayer on Tuesdays. You can get your prayer request in. You can join for prayer. Remember, Pastor Robin is out uh, having a good time. We're praying for him. And that Jason is the point person. So I'm pointing at Jason. You're the point person there. All right. And also remember that the Turkish church out in Laura is having their big sale today and tomorrow from 11 to 1800 on that. So I hope that that a word to the wise is sufficient on that. And let's give our tithes and our offerings right now. Our planned deal here that we're going to give to keep the church strong, keep things moving. And I'm so thankful for the Benevolence Fund because the church is also together helping a lot of people. Amen.
Let's just pray as we worship here. That's wonderful, God, the worship service today. Thank you so much. Let's just continue worshiping with our giving unto the Lord God. Amen. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. You're the good and faithful God. We thank you for blessing us and helping us and strengthening us, providing for us and protecting us. We thank you for substance. We thank you, Lord, that we have the things that we need and you're working mightily in our hearts and in our lives. And we bring unto you today, Lord, our tithes and our offerings, that there will be meat and fatness in this house. There will be a blessing here, O oh God. And that blessing will continue to go forth. Hallelujah. As Antalya is blessed, we want it blessed spiritually. We give in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. There is love that came for us, humble to a sinner's cross. You broke my shame. In sinfulness, you rose again, victorious. Faithfulness, none can deny, through the storm and through the fire. There is truth that sets me free, Jesus Christ. stronger you are stronger sin is broken you have saved me it is written Christ is risen Jesus you are Lord of all no beginning and no end you're my Save the lost, paid it all upon the cross. Let's sing it to him. You are stronger, you are stronger. Sin is broken, you have saved me. It is written, Christ is risen. Jesus, you are Lord of all. You are stronger. You you are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me, it is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you are Lord of all. So let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. So let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. So let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. So let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. You are strong. Let us read Acts, uh, Acts 19, verses 23 till 41. About that time, there arose a great disturbance about the way. A silversmith named Demetrius, who made silver shrines of Artemis, brought in a lord business for the craftsmen there. He called them together, along with the workers in related trades, and said, You know, my friends, that we receive a good income from this business. And you see and hear how this fellow Paul has convinced and led astray large numbers of people here in Ephesus and in practically the whole province of Asia. He says that gods made by human hands are no gods at all. 
There is danger not only that our trade will lose its, its good name, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will be discredited, and the goddess herself, who was worshipped throughout the province of Asia and the world, will be robbed of her divine majesty. When they heard this, they were furious and began shouting, Great is the Artemis of the Ephesians! Soon the whole city was in an uproar. The people seized Gaius and Aristarchus, Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia, and all of them rushed into the theater together. Paul wanted to appear before the crowd, but the disciples would not let him. Even some of the officials of the province, friends of Paul, sent him a message begging him not to venture into the theater. The assembly was in confusion. Some were shouting one thing, some another. Most of the people did not even know why they were there. The Jews in the crowd pushed Alexander to the front, and they shouted instructions to him. He motioned for silence in order to make a defense before the people. But when he realized he was a Jew, they all shouted in unison for about two hours, great is the Artemis of the Ephesians. The city clerk quieted the crowd and said, fellow Ephesians, doesn't all the world know that the city of Ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great Artemis and of her image, which fell from heaven? Therefore, since these facts are undeniable, you ought to calm down and do not anything rash. You have brought these men here, though they have neither robbed temples or blasphemed or goddess. If then Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a grievance against anybody, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. They can press charges. If there is anything further you want to bring up, it must be settled in a legal assembly. As it is, we are in danger of being charged with rioting because of what happened today. In that case, we will not be able to account for this commotion, since there is no reason for it. After he had said this, he dismissed the assembly. Let us pray for Martijn. Heavenly Father, thank you for Martijn. Thank you for who he is as a person and as a husband to me. Thank you for his willingness to serve you and to preach today. And please give him the rest and peace he needs. Give him the right words and speak through him to us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Please come and fill this place. Surprise us and open our hearts to hear your words. Teach us what we need to learn. Help us to become more and more like Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, God, for a beautiful wife. Yeah. I'm very blessed indeed. Besides, uh, less great men are great women. So, thank you for the opportunity to uh, have me here again and uh, to speak from you uh, the word of God today. I'm very blessed to have these opportunities. It's my third time now here. Uh, still struggling with my English uh, speaking. I'm very glad that I can uh, preach a lot in the Netherlands when I go back, but then going back to Dutch. But I will try my best again, and uh, hopefully we will learn something today. So, beloved brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we live in a time of a pandemic that hits lots of parts of society. To lose your job or lose your business is something we see happening a lot. Income being lost has been happening to a lot of people these days. Maybe you're dealing with it yourself or know a friend or family member who's dealing with it, or at least you will hear it hurts from somebody or read about it. And we pray for those people. It shocked me when I read about some uh, tea house owners here in Turkey who ended their lives because of closing down during the lockdowns, dealing with a lot of costs, but no income. And a lot of people in the city working, working in the tourist sector will have less income, with a lot of less people coming over to the city in the tourist sector. People come over, and people, less people coming over for the holidays, decreasing income. It's something we can imagine these days. A time ago, I read an article about another effect of COVID pandemic and also related to the tourist sector. 
in uh, our home country, in the Netherlands, a warehouse is filled with millions of unsold wooden shoes. Maybe you think, well, just use them yourself, but I need to set the image straight that not all Dutch people are walking on wooden shoes. It's just a very small group of farmers who still use them, but normally these wooden shoes are sold to uh, people who come uh, over as tourists and they take the wooden shoes as souvenirs back to their home countries. But yeah, no tourists coming into the countries, so the business dried up. And the business is that drying up is the same situa situation what Demetrius felt in Ephesus. His business was producing and selling figurines of icons and of the temple of Artemis. His warehouse was filling up with these unsold prob products. But Demetrius was not going to let this problem grow any bigger. He knew what the problem was and he defended his business by gathering people together to start a protest. Today we're going to take a closer look at this story and find out what is the greatest and the most important in our lives. The scripture of today started with the words about that time. These words refer to the plans of Paul to leave Ephesus. In verses 21 and 22, you can read that Paul intended to travel to Macedonia, to Achaia and Jerusalem. And he also must visit Rome, we read there. Paul sent two fellow workers ahead while he stayed in the province of Asia a little longer. Last week, Mark told about the success of the work in Ephesus. At Paul's first visit uh, in, Ephesus, in, in Ephesus, he didn't stay long, but he promised that he would come back. And now in his third journey, he came back, he fulfilled his promise. And how? The growth of the church was great. Paul was working in this big capital of the province of Asia. And in this big city, he reached a lot of people. Paul was about, tr about three years working in Ephesus. And the story of today really reveals actually the success of his ministry there. The gospel was taught. People are starting to accept Jesus in their life. Amazing miracles were done by God in this city. The way was booming. Because of a lot of people traveled to Ephesus for trade or religious purposes, lots of people from far away came into the city and heard the gospel now. Instead of Paul traveling from town to town to town to reach people, the people came to him. But Paul decided it was time to move on and head over for his next big target in his journeys, the city of Rome. He was wrapping up his work in Ephesus, but then. A big riot took place. It wasn't Paul's first taste of opposition. He dealt with that a lot in his work and in his journeys. But this time, the disturbance was not started by Jews, but by Greek, pe Greek people living in Ephesus. Paul's work in the city really changed something. The cults of the Greek gods was being traded in for the gospel of Jesus Christ. People came from a far distance to visit the great temple of Artemis in Ephesus, one of the wonders of the ancient times. Artemis was the goddess of fertility and her temple was the center of a huge cult following and worship. Travelers came to Ephesus for Artemis, but found Jesus instead. The cult of Artemis was in danger. Well, we see that it wasn't really the main reason for this disturbance. Surprisingly enough, the problem was money. We meet Demetrius. He's a silversmith in the city who made good money with selling the silver shrines of Artemis. These shrines, as far as we know, were little wooden temples or little silver statues of the goddess of Artemis. And a lot of these souvenirs were sold, as, uh, were sold to travelers who came into the city and they took them uh, uh, home as an amulet for their homes. But the business was drying up and Demetrius was not going to let it happen that it would destroy his business. He gathers the craftsmen and the salesmen who are involved in this business and spoke, you know, my friends, that we receive a good income from this business. And you see and hear how this fellow Paul has convinced and led astray large numbers of people here in Ephesus and in practically the whole province of Asia. He says that gods made by human hands are not gods at all. There is a danger not only that our trade will lose its good name, but also the temple of the great goddess Artemis will be discredited and the goddess herself, who is worshipped throughout the province of Asia and the world, will be robbed of her divine majesty. So the real problem became clear. 
the personal problem of decreasing income from their businesses shifted to a bigger problem of the cult of Artemis. The goddess was one with the ident identity of the city of Ephesus. As a true political speech, Demetrius knows where to push these people to agree with him. It's a sentiment where what every proud Ephesians would feel. If, if you offend Artemis, you offend me. A personal motive shifts to a public problem, and people are agreeing with this sentiment. Very interesting how an ego egoistic issue of a few men can be disguised and evolve to a great public problem. Indirectly, we see that this problem of Demetrius is actually a testimony of the success of the gospel. All those people who normally came to Ephesus and brought their shrines came home with something else. The work of Paul and his people really hit the business of Demetrius so hard that they started protesting. Paul was having effect with his message that gods are not made by human hands. People followed this statement. When they came to Christ and the shrines that were laying unsold on the shelves are actually representing the success of Paul. Demetrius needed to make an end to this movement in the city. He was not going to lose his wealth and income to this guy, Paul. Now today, I don't think any one of us is making his money while by selling little, little statues of an idol. But protecting our income is something we can relate to. When people see a chance to make money out of something, it's not so hard to stretch it to make a little bit more than what is actually fair. A good example is a man in the Netherlands who had connection to China and offered the Dutch government to buy a bulk of face masks over there when there was a great shortage of face masks at the start of the pandemic. He said that he would not make any money of it, but he would just do it for the health of the Dutch people. He did appear to break even on this deal, but in the end it became clear that he made 9 million euros on this deal. Money is such an easy way to bring the worst out of in people. Money, income, and wealth is often seen as the greatest thing in life, but in the end, it's a beast that's never satisfied. Money, uh, um, and we also need to be aware of it, that it will not be the greatest thing in our lives. We could also be de defending our work and income more than is actually fair. In the end, it's God that provides us with everything we need. And so easily we see money, possessions, a job, as something we have earned by ourselves and that we deserve. But in the end, our hands are empty and it's God that gives us all to use for his honor, honor and glory. So in the story of Demetrius, we see people who live like money is the greatest thing in life. And that's not a thing of the past. Still the world will tell us that our lives are so much better with a bigger house, a beautiful holiday, the newest tech gadgets, also in the, in the city we live now, we see a hunger for that wealth. As followers of Christ, we know better. The Bible warns us for money. Jesus warns us that we can't serve both God and the mammon. We need to be aware that it doesn't get a hold of us. We see in Demetrius that money can bring the worst out of people. For example, we could get used to our income even when our work is maybe less, when we work maybe less hard than we do let appear. There are people who get their money and, and income from abroad and nobody is checking your work day to day. So it's, st it's easy to, uh, so, it's e it's, so we still need to be on, uh, uh, honest and accountable for the income that we, for the work that we do. And when we do have a good income, show the world that it's not the most important to us that we don't show off, but instead share our wealth with people who need it. We don't have to look far to see that money is not divided equally. Money is not ours, it's God who provides. And don't cling to it, rather help the people who don't have a job or where money is tight. So we have seen that money isn't the greatest thing in life, but Demetrius shifts the focus of the people to something else, the goddess of the city of Ephesus. Demetrius uses the pride of the city for his problems. The great temple was very important to the city and their citizens. The goddess was one with the culture of the city and anyone who attacks this way of living has a big problem. 
And that argument that God was attacking the pride of the city has effect. From a group of craftsmen, the protest grows to a big riot. All the people get into the theater of Ephesus and it's filled with people protesting for their temple, for their goddess, for their way of living. Protesting against this new movement of the way. Around 20,000 people gathered in the theater and start rioting. Logic and reasonable thinking are not possible anymore. These people are angry. In the theater of Ephesus, confusion grew. Some were shouting one thing, some another. Most of the people did not even know why they were there. All the loving people in our congregation would obviously not be, be part of this kind of riot. I, I hope so, <laughs> at least. <laughs> Yelling in a stadium is not really an example of a fruit of the spirit, but, but we're still people after all, and we are vulnerable for these sentiments, especially when it touches a certain pain in our lives. The people are riled up. It's like a chain reaction. We saw the same thing happening when the people in Jerusalem accused Jesus in front of Pontius Pilate. Pilate tried to, try to find the real problem here and actually he didn't really see the truth in the accusations that the Jews made against Jesus. But there was no place for reason at this time. They were mad and only wanted one thing, Jesus must die. Jesus did not rile up his people when people were disagreeing with him. Until now, he always kept the conversation going and spoke the truth in a loving and kind way. Not as a slap in the face, but pointing out the wrong things and showing them the truth in, a, in, in the truth and love that he represented. But in the end, he also had a big riot against him in Jerusalem, and he knew it needed to happen this way. Both Jesus and Paul spread a message that hurts people because it hurts the way that they live their lifestyle. In Jerusalem, it were the scribes and the priests that saw their way of religion failing. And here in Ephesus, we see Paul against the cult of Artemis. The message of Jesus rubs against the normal way of living. We see that Jesus is greater and that, he's still, and, and that he is still greater today. The message of Jesus rubs against our normal way of living. That's what I hope it does, I must say. Sometimes I really wonder what exactly is the difference between Christians and non-believers, especially when I look at my own country. I ask myself sometimes the question, does really the gospel still rubs against the way of living in the world? Are we compromising as Christians? Or are we not bold enough? Is there no, no, is there no power enough or... Am I maybe too pessimistic about the power of the gospel in my country? I struggle with these questions because at one hand I see so much churches closing in the Netherlands. But on the other hand I meet people who do their best to live the Christian way and show the world that God loves them and show the lifestyle of Christ. And that gives me hope. So please let us as followers of Christ here today declare that Jesus is greater than the lifestyles in the world. I would love to see a lot of industries lose their income because people found something better in Jesus than industries of selling drugs, alcohol, sex, or whatever people think they need and think that it's great in their lives. So we go back to the theater. A big battle was going on there. The followers of idols versus the followers of Christ. The Ephesians wanted their own goddess to win. It seems that the temple cult is losing ground and they would not let this happen. So they dragged two of the men working for this movement into the theater. Paul can be found, so two of his fellow workers, Gaius and Archistargus, were put in front of them. And Paul wanted to help his colleagues and explain his side of the story. But the disciples weren't letting him let him go to the theater. People around Paul stopped him from going there. And it's probably for the best. These people in the theater are not open for reason. And Paul was the big target of this whole riot. And he would not have survived this. People around him saw the bigger picture. There was also so much more to achieve for Paul. So please stay safe. There was wisdom around Paul to stop him. And even high, high Roman officials urged him to hide himself at this moment. 
it tells us that the leaders of the city see what Paul and his movements are, that they are not intending harm towards the city. These wise people stop Paul from going to this crazy people and crazy they are. For two hours they keep shouting, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. So interestingly enough, the Jews who at many points wanted actually to get rid of Paul many times, now getting pushed in the same corner as Paul. At this moment, it's the people of Artemis versus everybody else. So the Jews wanted to make the distinction between them and the people of the way. So they pushed Alexander to the stage to represent them and to make their point. The Jews were not a threat to the Ephesians. The Jews just wanted their freedom to live their faith in their own space in the city. They didn't have any urge to convert Greeks to their faith. They just wanted their own space, and now it seems that their faith would go under with the church. The religion that they wanted to end by their own would take them down with them, and that couldn't happen. But when the Ephesians saw a Jew appearing, an outsider, a foreign, pe a foreign man, they just got more mad. But the person they wanted is not coming. There is a big riot going on and the unrest grew bigger and bigger. And I think I recognize a lot in this position of the Jews here. When I look at my own country, I, I think that many churches are coming together on their own little island and don't really want to lose that safe place in the world. When even government yeah, just keeps increasing or decreasing their, their place in, the, in society. We don't want to harm you, so please don't harm us, is the position of the churches. There's not really an urge to influence the public life. Religion is just a part of our life. As the Jews, many churches just wanted to practice their faith without bothering the world. But we as churches are a result of that thriving movement of the way. We do want to reach people and show them that there is only one true God who people need to know. The church is not a part of the world, but the church is in the world. And I see a, grow, a growing movement, I, I hope to see it, of people who want to influence that world. To change the heart of people who think that Christian beliefs are outdated. That Christian principles don't matter anymore. And a lot of time we just cling to our own space where our church is in society. Where we come together as Christians on our own little island. So no, I don't want to separate our faith from the world. It needs to go into the world. And that can bring opposition in the world. Maybe we could even say that when there is no much opposition against your faith, maybe there's something wrong. So Paul spoke a lot about opposition that he got in his work. In the letter to Corinth, he speaks about his time in Ephesus. And he writes, I face death every day, yes, just as surely as I boast about you in Jesus Christ, our Lord, if I fought wild beasts in Ephesus. Every day, Paul worked in the, at the Agora or was teaching in the hall of Tyrannus. Every day, he faced threats and wasn't sure for his life. Already making plans to go further, and maybe this riot was the last straw to head out of Ephesus. Paul always trusted God, who at many moments saved his life from big oppositions. He knew that the cause that he was working for was worth putting himself at risk for. He was a bold man and did not fear the theater filled with 20,000 mad people. But here God has protected him by the people surrounding him. And from this attitude of Paul, we can certainly learn something. A comforting lesson would be that you don't want to put yourself in, in, in unnecessary risks. But it's not an excuse to not share boldly the message that we believe is true. Paul never fled from an opportunity to share the message. We may be called to lay down our lives, but not throw our lives away. So, let us all, so let's use all opportunities to, that are wise to use to share the gospel and share our, the story of God. We end the story today with the city clerk who made an appeal to the riot. He restores the order in the city. An interesting thing, Mark told me, the city clerk would not notice this huge riot and a lot of noise in the city because the theater was in the lower 
uh, part of the city facing the sea and the high officials, high officials offices would be higher up the, ma the mountain or higher up the city in the higher city. So the shouting was not no so noticeable for the city, city clerk, but somebody would have notified him and he went uh, down to the theater to set things straight. As a true salesman, the city clerk told the people what they want to hear. Doesn't all the world know that the city of Ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great Artemis and of her image which fell from heaven? Come on, everybody knows that Artemis is the greatest. Nobody is arguing that. The city clerk made clear that he was on the side of the people. And the argument of Paul that gods were not made by human hands, that doesn't apply. We all know that Artemis fell from heaven. Of course Paul is wrong. The city clerk was trying to bring reason to the theater and speak towards the people. These men of Paul have done nothing wrong, actually. They have done nothing wrong against the temple or the goddess herself. This is not the way to handle this feud. The courts are open and there are pro, pro councils to handle your issues with Paul and his people. The way you are handling your grievances in the theater is not the way to go. Riots are not a thing of 2,000 years ago. We still see often protests getting out of hand. I saw a documentary that followed people who are involved in protests around the COVID measures. They all had their reasons and, and, are, uh, and were lucky to have in our country the freedom of protest in the Netherlands. But when a protest becomes a riot, the police will make an end of it. It still needs to be peacefully. But the interesting thing in this documentary was all those people have uh, their own little or their own pains in their lives that urge them towards these, mo these movements of protests. There is an underlying personal pain. One man had lost his job due, due to the COVID pandemic. Uh, a woman lost her father due to COVID virus and was frustrated that she couldn't visit him in the hospital during that time. Person, uh, another person was in debt because he was seen as a fraud by the government and he lost all trust in the governments. Personal problems grow into riots. People riling themselves up and take measures in their own hands. We learn to stay sensible and try the official ways to change the things we need to change. That's what a city clerk convinced the people to do in the theater. But we also see individual interests of the city clerk. This disturbance was no small problem for him. He needed to guarantee the peace in the city and this riot wasn't a good sign of a job on his part towards the Roman Empire, Emperor. So the assembly was broken up. The problem of Demetrius needed to be settled in a normal way of justice in the city. All the people in the theater left with their tails between their legs. So the church in Ephesus was protected and don't forget that there's still two people or two men of Paul's team in a the theater who weren't really safe at that time. The city clerk pro protected the movement of Paul and his team and the church kept working in the city. The fruit will work, good go, for, good go forward. So we see in this story many people who are dealing and are defending their own interests. interests. Demetrius and his colleagues defend their income and wealth a lot of Ephesians are defending their way of living and identity of the city. Jews defend their, their position of practice, their faith in peace. And a city clerk who defends the peace in the city and by that his own position. We try to defend our interests, but, ag but against these ego uh, egocentric ideas, there is a trap gospel that teaches us when we try to hold on to something on this earth, we're going to lose it teaching about gathering treasures in heaven instead of on earth. People tell us many times to be completely different because we are living a new life, a new life in an old world. The gospel puts everything upside down. As humans, we try to preserve our own worldly lifestyle, but the Bible tells us that we are completely different. We see a story in a city where the gospel was thriving. In just a few years, it grew from a small group of disciples with an incomplete picture of the gospel, lacking the Holy Spirit, towards a successful church of believers. We see that the success of the gospel is rubbing against the world. There is a battle between good and evil, and the story of the riot is a big threat to, our, to the church. 
But in the end, the gospel is no harm for the world. It saves the world. But a lot of idols are standing in the way of people finding the one and true God. And as people who are already know that, that true God, we need people to point to him and show people what they put their trust in is not bringing life. For eternity, a career, a successful business, a nice house or a car has no worth. So today we learn that sharing the gospel can cost us something. The growing faith in Ephesus resulted in opposition. Today it will probably not set us against a big riot so easily, but there is a lot of other places where people shout their opinion and beliefs that are not based on the real truth. Social media is an effective source for where a lot of people can easily shout their opinion with no uh, reasonability. Where you defend the Christian principle, a lot of people will shout that you are wrong and how they see it is correct. Hopefully, when we get into conversations with others, we bring the real problem of these people into the light and testify of the gospel that in the end will solve every problem on earth. As Christians, we want to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to defend him. Great is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Great is Jesus Christ, of the, Son, the Son of the living God. And when we say that, it could result in problems. We need to witness of this truth, but please don't intend for these problems. As Paul writes to the Colossians, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversations be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. We don't turn away from these conversations. We don't want to push the message down the throat, but we'll witness in love and a kind way of the hope that, we, that is in Jesus Christ. In that way, a great message was brought into Asia and not without effect. And that message is brought into Antalya today or into the Netherlands or in America or whatever you are as a witness as, as of Christ are located. Our goal is a thriving church in every city rubbing against the wrong idols in the world because great is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Let me just pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this story in the book of Acts, Father. Thank you for this journey that we are going through uh, for such a time towards the stories of Acts, Father. And we see a thriving church. We see a thriving work of Paul, Father, and all of the other apostles going to the world, Father. And thank you for this great story in Acts 19 of a thriving church, Father. In just three years, we see so much happening. But we also see the opposition in this city. And Father, that we really can take a good lesson out of the opposition that happened, Father. That it's not weird that, and you also said that we would face opposition as followers of Christ. At the same time, I ask myself, where is that opposition in the Western world where I look at? In the Netherlands, where it's so easy to believe and nobody really minds. Father, maybe we need, really need to speak up and really use every conversation in the end, as, uh, as we said in the end of this sermon, that we use every opportunity to speak the truth. Great is you, are you, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. At the same time, Father, I want to pray for those people who are, are facing opposition, Father, because that's also the truth in this world. There are parts of and countries and parts of the world where you can't freely believe in, in your son, Jesus Christ, where there is opposition, where there is threat every day and that they can't speak up about the truth because it really will threaten their lives, Father. And we bless those people and we pray for those people that you will keep, keep them safe, Father. Be with them, Father, and be with the churches that are under the ground, Father, in, in all, the, all over the world, Father. Bless them and keep them safe and that they still would have a good work in those cities and in those countries, Father. And we please be with us in this country, Father, where opposition is maybe also growing, Father, that we still have the opportunity to share in a, in a, in a wise way, Father. Give us the opportunities to show who you are, that this, this country, this, this part of the world will, will be win one back, Father, for you. I pray it in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you, Marta. And let's continue with the pastoral prayer as he began. Father, we just want to say thank you for this word. We want to say thank you that you are the one who is great, not Artemis or anything else in our lives that seeks to take your place. I think of Psalm 48, verse 1, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. We thank you, Father, right now, because we know, God, there is none like you. And we ask you to help us to put Jesus Christ on the throne in every area of our lives, for truly you are great. Thank you again for the reminders we have today from our time, Lord. May we live them out in Jesus' name. Father, we also want to be a people who care about others throughout the world. And right now, this very weekend, at this moment, seven major nations in the world are meeting, the G7. I know Vic and I are very involved in prayer for this, Lord, and we need to be too. Because God, unless we see a global response to problems, I don't believe we're going to see the solutions you want for this world. That's true also of the vaccines that are being shared now more and more with the rest of the world. If one hurts, we all hurt. Help us. I really truly believe this is part of your lesson for us in this pandemic time, that we don't serve ourselves alone. We serve one another. We must love our neighbor near and far. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we just want to say thank you that the numbers here in Turkey are going down little by little. And as Martin reminded us, Lord, tourism is very important in this nation as it is in other nations. But we pray that the numbers will continue to go down. The threat of COVID will recede and the tourists will return and the finances will return to people who are so desperate even here. And Lord, when we think of desperation, we just want to pray for the people of Ethiopia, Tigray. Right now, they say might be one of the worst famines in 10 years or so. Lord God, have mercy. Let our hearts be broken when we look at those who are suffering so terribly. So help them, Lord. You are the only one with the answers to these world problems, Lord. Father, we just want to uh, end by lifting up Robin and Marilyn and their son, Jason. We thank you that they're on vacation. But Lord, it hasn't been a totally smooth sail. We know that. They are in Greece and a small island where their boat engine decided to take a rest, shall we say. And they are going to need to replace the engine or fix it somehow. So we pray for them for wisdom. Thank you. The good news, Robin said today, is that there are some um, mechanics on the island who can help him and fix it. So we pray that'll take place soon. And we want special prayer for Marilyn, too, who hurt her, her hand, Lord, in this process of perhaps, I don't know, raising the sails or something. So just help her, too, Lord. But help them to even enjoy this forced rest on this beautiful place. Thank you. So just be with us all, Lord, during this time. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for this community at SPUC. We thank you for your mercy, your loving kindness, Lord. May you continue to lead and guide us and draw us all closer to the great God, Jesus Christ. In your name, amen. stand as we close out our time I tell you folks it's a great day to be alive because there's plenty of opportunities for God to display his glory with what's going on we can look at trials and be overwhelmed we can look at them as opportunities for God to display what he wants to do and he's at work he's never stopped it's the same God that was with Paul back then he's with us today 
Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your Let's sing spirit, that again. God. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God, not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. You are the fire, we are the temple, you are the voice. We are your son, you are our God, we are your people, you are the light we stand in, we stand in of you, we stand Not by might, not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. called us out, out of the darkness, into your light, into your light, grace upon grace, beauty for ashes, you come to us, we come alive. Spirit God, not by might, not by power, by your Spirit God. Let's sing that again, not by might, not by might, not by power, by your Spirit God. Send your Spirit God, not by might, not by power, by your Spirit God. Send your spirit, God. Breathe. Come and breathe on us. Spirit, breathe. Spirit, breathe on us. Breathe. Come and breathe. And we stand in awe. We stand in awe. You. We stand in awe. You. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God, not by might, not by power, 
by your spirit God send your spirit God not by might not by power by your spirit God send your spirit God not by might not by power by your spirit God send your spirit God Lord, without you, without your spirit, we're lost. We have nothing. We need you, God. Yes, Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Spirit, we love you. We can't say it enough. Yes, and uh, let's also share our love with each other as a congregation. 
in uh, our Zoom meeting this Sunday. If you're watching live this Sunday at the premiere, uh, please uh, join the Zoom room with Thick and Die so we can have some fellowship together in a digital way in these days. And as for the benediction, I want to bless you with some words out of Ephesians 3. Now to him who is able to do so much more than all we can imagine, can ask or imagine, according to this power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.